Gur Gum, Wikipedia Audio Gur Gum, also called Garin, is a substance made from gur beans which has thickening and stabilizing properties useful in various industries, traditionally the food industry and, increasingly, the hydraulic fracturing industry. The gur seeds are dehusked, milled, and screened to obtain the gur gum. It is typically produced as a free-flowing, off-white powder. It is classed as a galactomannan. The gur bean is principally grown in India, Pakistan, US, Australia, and Africa. India produces about 2.5 to 3.5 million tons of gur annually, making it the largest producer with about 80% of world production, while Pakistan produced 250,000 tons of gur in 2013. In India, Rajasthan, Gujarat, and Haryana are the main producing regions, and Jodhpur, Sri Ganganagar and Hanumangarhan Rajasthan are the major gur trading markets. The United States has produced 4,600 to 14,000 tons of gur over the last five years. Texas acreage since 1999 has fluctuated from about 7,000 to 50,000 acres. The world production for gur gum and its derivatives is about 1.0 million tons. Industrial gur gum accounts for about 70% of the total demand. Mainly it is used as a prop pant transport slash prop pant suspending agent in hydraulic fracturing. In 2012 gur prices increased by 900 to 1000 percent. At its peak it reached to $28,000 per ton. However later stabilized to $8,000 per ton. The main reason for this large-scale price rise was the inventory built up by companies like Halliburton and Schlumberger, Baker Hughes, Cafrac Well Services, amidst the fear of shortage of gur gum for drilling due to ongoing drought in Rajasthan. 2013 was a strong year for gur sowing and production in India. The total sowing area rose by 21% in 2013 to reach 10.6 million acres. Rajasthan, Haryana, and Gujarat the three key gur-producing states exceeded the sowing area targets set by their respective agriculture departments. Non-traditional gur cultivators in other Indian states also showed keen interest in the crop in 2013. Calgary-based Trick and Well Services Limited touts its trademarked gur substitutes Trifraxi and Novum. Baker Hughes trademarked something called Aquaperm, while Halliburton rolled out Perm Stim. By 2013, Schlumberger was advertising its trademarked Gur substitute, Highway Most of these laboratory substitutes use biodegradable polymers. But according to market trends analyst ThomasNet.com, there isn't anything currently available with the reliability and quantities of gur gum. Production and Trade The American Petroleum Institute's July 2014 report, Hydraulic Fracturing, Unlocking America's Natural Gas Resources, uses images of a tube of lipstick and an ice cream bar as examples of the non-threatening ingredients in fracking fluids. One of India's biggest gur exporters, Vikas WSP, gave away 3,000 tons of gur seeds to encourage farmers to switch away from cotton and other crops to cultivation of gur bushes. Chemically, gur gum is a polysaccharide composed of the sugars galactose and mannose. The backbone is a linear chain of beta 1,4 linked mannose residues to which galactose residues are 1,6 linked at every second mannose, forming short side branches. Gur gum has the ability to withstand temperatures of 80 degrees Celsius in 5 minutes. HS code 1302230, Kano 9030. 
EEC NO E412, BT NO 1302-3290, Enix NO 232-536-8, IMCO Code, Harmless. Gur gum is more soluble than locust bean gum, as it has more galactose branch points. Unlike locust bean gum, it is not self-gelling. However, either borax or calcium can cross-link gur gum, causing it to gel. In water, it is non-ionic and hydrocolloidal. It is not affected by ionic strength or pH, but will degrade at extreme pH and temperature. It remains stable in solution over pH range 5 to 7. Strong acids cause hydrolysis and loss of viscosity, and alkalis in strong concentration also tend to reduce viscosity. It is insoluble in most hydrocarbon solvents. The viscosity attained is dependent on time, temperature, concentration, pH, rate of agitation and practical size of the powdered gum used. The lower the temperature, the lower the rate at which viscosity increases and the lower the final viscosity. Above 80 degrees, the final viscosity is slightly reduced. Finer gour powders swell more rapidly than coarse powdered gum. Gour gum shows a clear low shear plateau on the flow curve and is strongly shear thinning. The rheology of gour gum is typical for a random coil polymer. It does not show the very high low shear plateau viscosities seen with more rigid polymer chains such as xanthan gum. It is very thick isotropic above 1% concentration, but below 0.3%, the thixotropy is slight. Gour gum shows viscosity synergy with xanthan gum. Gour gum and micellar casein mixtures can be slightly thixotropic if a biphase system forms. Gour gum is economical because it has almost eight times the water thickening potency of cornstarch, only a very small quantity is needed for producing sufficient viscosity. Thus, it can be used in various multi-phase formulations as an emulsifier because it helps to prevent oil droplets from coalescing, and slash or as a stabilizer because it helps to prevent solid particles from settling. Gour gum is a viscosifier with very favorable rheological properties. It has a really useful ability to form breakable gels when cross-linked with boron. This makes it extremely valuable for hydraulic fracturing. Fracking entails the pumping of sand-laden fluids into an oil or natural gas reservoir at a high pressure and flow rate. This cracks the reservoir rock and then propels the cracks open. Water alone is too thin to be effective at carrying prop pant sand, so gour gum is one of the ingredients added to thicken the slurry mixture and improve its ability to carry prop pant. There are several properties which are important one. Thixotropic, the fluid should be thixotropic, meaning it should gel within few hours. 2. Gelling and degelling, the desired viscosity changes over the course of a few hours. When the fracking slurry is mixed, it needs to be thin enough to make it easier to pump. Then as it flows down the pipe, the fluid needs to gel up to support the prop pant and flush it deep into the fractures. After that process, the gel has to break down so we can flow back and recover the fracking fluid, but leave the prop pant behind. This requires a chemical process which produces then breaks the gel cross-linking at a predictable rate. Gour and boron and proprietary chemicals can accomplish both of these goals at once. Gour gum retards ice crystal growth non-specifically by slowing mass transfer across the solid-slash-liquid interface. It shows good stability during freeze-thaw cycles. It is therefore used in egg-free ice cream.
Guar gum has synergistic effects with locust bean gum and sodium alginate. May be synergistic with xanthan, together with xanthan gum, it produces a thicker product, which is used in applications such as soups, which do not require clear results. Mining, hydroseeding formation of seed bearing guar tack, medical institutions, especially nursing homes, used to thicken liquids and foods for patients with dysphagia, fire retardant industry, as a thickener in FOS check, nanoparticles industry, to produce silver or gold nanoparticles, or develop innovative medicine delivery mechanisms for drugs in pharmaceutical industry. Guar gum is a hydrocolloid, which is particularly useful for making thick pastes without forming a gel and for keeping water bound in a sauce or emulsion. Guar gum can be used for thickening cold and hot liquids, to make hot gels, light foams and as an emulsion stabilizer. Guar gum can be used for cottage cheeses, curds, yogurt, sauces, soups and frozen desserts. Guar gum is also a good source of fiber with 80% soluble dietary fiber on a dry weight basis. Guar gum is analyzed for In baked goods, it increases dough yield, gives greater resiliency, and improves texture and shelf life. In pastry fillings, it prevents weeping of the water in the filling, keeping the pastry crust crisp. It is primarily used in hypoallergenic recipes that use different types of whole grain flours. Because the consistency of these flours allows the escape of gas released by leavening, guar gum is needed to improve the thickness of these flours, allowing them to rise as a normal flour would. In dairy products, it thickens milk, yogurt, kefir, and liquid cheese products and helps maintain homogeneity and texture of ice creams and sherbets. It is used for similar purposes in plant milks, for meat, it functions as a binder, in condiments, it improves the stability and appearance of salad dressings, barbecue sauces, relishes, ketchups and others, in canned soup, it is used as a thickener and stabilizer. It is also used in dry soups, instant oatmeal, sweet desserts, canned fish in sauce, frozen food items, and animal feed. The FDA has banned guar gum as a weight loss pill due to reports of the substance swelling and obstructing the intestines and esophagus. Properties Guar gum powder standards are Depending upon the requirement of end product, various processing techniques are used. The commercial production of guar gum normally uses roasting, differential attrition, sieving, and polishing. Food grade guar gum is manufactured in stages. Guar split selection is important in this process. The split is screened to clean it and then soaked to prehydrate it in a double cone mixer. The prehydrating stage is very important because it determines the rate of hydration of the final product. The soaked splits, which have reasonably high moisture content, are passed through a flaker. The flaked guar split is ground and then dried. The powder is screened through rotary screens to deliver the required particle size. Oversized particles are either recycled to main ultra-fine or reground in a separate regrind plant, according to the viscosity requirement. This stage helps to reduce the load at the grinder. The soak splits are difficult to grind. Direct grinding of those generates more heat in the grinder which is not desired in the process, as it reduces the hydration of the product. Through the heating, grinding, and polishing process, the husk is separated from the endosperm halves and the refined guar split is obtained. Through the further grinding process, the refined guar split is then treated and converted into powder. 
The split manufacturing process yields husk and germ called gour meal, widely sold in the international market as cattle feed. It is high in protein and contains oil and albuminoids, about 50% in germ and about 25% in husks. The quality of the food grade gour gum powder is defined from its particle size, rate of hydration, and microbial content. Manufacturers define different grades and qualities of gour gum by the particle size, the viscosity generated with a given concentration, and the rate at which that viscosity develops. Coarse mesh gour gums will typically, but not always, develop viscosity more slowly. They may achieve a reasonably high viscosity, but will take longer to achieve. On the other hand, they will disperse better than fine mesh, all conditions being equal. A finer mesh, such as a 200 mesh, requires more effort to dissolve. Modified forms of gour gum are available commercially, including enzyme-modified, cationic and hydropropyl gour. Fracturing fluids normally consist of many additives that serve two main purposes, firstly to enhance fracture creation and prop pant carrying capability and secondly to minimize formation damage. Viscosifiers, such as polymers and cross-linking agents, temperature stabilizers, pH control agents, and fluid loss control materials are among the additives that assist fracture creation. Formation damage is minimized by incorporating breakers, biocides, and surfactants. More appropriate gelling agents are linear polysaccharides, such as gour gum, cellulose, and their derivatives. Gour gums are preferred as thickeners for enhanced oil recovery. Gour gum and its derivatives account for most of the gelled fracturing fluids. Gour is more water-soluble than other gums, and it is also a better emulsifier, because it has more galactose branch points. Gour gum shows high-low shear viscosity, but it is strongly shear thinning. Being non-ionic, it is not affected by ionic strength or pH but will degrade at low pH at moderate temperature. Gour's derivatives demonstrate stability in high temperature and pH environments. Gour use allows for achieving exceptionally high viscosities, which improves the ability of the fracturing liquid to transport prop pant. Gour hydrates fairly rapidly in cold water to give highly viscous pseudoplastic solutions of, generally, greater low shear viscosity than other hydrocolloids. The colloidal solids present in gour make fluids more efficient by creating less filter cake. Prop pant pack conductivity is maintained by utilizing a fluid that has excellent fluid loss control, such as the colloidal solids present in gour gum. Gour has up to eight times the thickening power of starch. Derivatization of gour gum leads to subtle changes in properties, such as decreased hydrogen bonding, increased solubility in water-alcohol mixture, and improved electrolyte compatibility. These changes in properties result in increased use in different fields, like textile printing, explosives, and oil-water fracturing applications. Chemical Composition Solubility and Viscosity Cross-linking Gour Thickening Ice crystal growth Grading Manufacturing process Industrial applications Gour molecules have a tendency to aggregate during the hydraulic fracturing process, mainly due to intermolecular hydrogen bonding. These aggregates are detrimental to oil recovery because they clog the fractures restricting the flow of oil. Cross-linking gour polymer chains prevents aggregation by forming metal hydroxyl complexes. 
The first cross-linked Gur gels were developed in the late 60s. Several metal additives have been used for cross-linking, among them are chromium, aluminum, antimony, zirconium, and the more commonly used, boron. Boron, in the form of B4, reacts with the hydroxyl groups on the polymer in a two-step process to link two polymer strands together to form bis-diol complexes. 1,11,2 diol complex and a 1,11,3 diol complex, place the negatively charged borate ion onto the polymer chain as a pendant group. Boric acid itself does not apparently complex to the polymer so that all bound boron is negatively charged. The primary form of cross-linking may be due to ionic association between the anionic borate complex and adsorbed cations on the second polymer chain. The development of cross-linked gels was a major advance in fracturing fluid technology. Viscosity is enhanced by tying together the low molecular weight strands, effectively yielding higher molecular weight strands and a rigid structure. Cross-linking agents are added to linear polysaccharide slurries to provide higher prop pant transport performance, relative to linear gels. Lower concentrations of Gour gelling agents are needed when linear Gour chains are cross-linked. It has been determined that reduced Gour concentrations provide better and more complete breaks in a fracture. The breakdown of cross-linked Gour gel after the fracturing process restores formation permeability and allows increased production flow of petroleum products. Food Applications The largest market for Gour gum is in the food industry. In the U.S., differing percentages are set for its allowable concentration in various food applications. In Europe, Gour gum has EU food additive code E412. Xanthan gum and Gour gum are the most frequently used gums in gluten-free recipes and gluten-free products. Applications include Gour gum, as a water-soluble fiber, acts as a bulk-forming laxative, so is claimed to be effective in promoting regular bowel movements and relieving constipation and chronic related functional bowel ailments, such as diverticulosis, Crohn's disease, colitis, and irritable bowel syndrome. Several studies have found significant decreases in human serum cholesterol levels following Gour gum ingestion. These decreases are thought to be a function of its high soluble fiber content. Gour gum has been considered of interest in regard to both weight loss and diabetic diets. It is a thermogenic substance. Moreover, its low digestibility lends its use in recipes as a filler, which can help to provide satiety, or slow the digestion of a meal thus lowering the glycemic index of that meal. In the late 1980s, Gour gum was used and heavily promoted in several weight loss drugs. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration eventually recalled these due to reports of esophageal blockage from insufficient fluid intake, after one brand alone caused at least 10 users to be hospitalized, and a death. For this reason, Gour gum is no longer approved for use in over-the-counter weight loss drugs in the United States, although this restriction does not apply to supplements. Moreover, a meta-analysis combining the results of 11 randomized, controlled trials found Gour gum supplements were not effective in reducing body weight. Gour gum, though, is also capable of reducing the absorbability of dietary minerals when foods or nutritional supplements containing them are consumed concomitantly with it, but this is less of a concern with gour gum than with various insoluble dietary fibers. Some studies have found gour gum to improve dietary glucose tolerance. 
Research has revealed the water-soluble fiber in it may help people with diabetes by slowing the absorption of sugars by the small intestine. Although the rate of absorption is reduced, the amount of sugar absorbed is the same overall. This may help diabetic patients by moderating glucose spikes. Nutritional and Medicinal Effects Gour-based compounds, such as hydroxypropyl gour, have been in artificial tears to treat dry eye. Some studies have found an allergic sensitivity to gour gum developed in a few individuals working in an industrial environment where airborne concentrations of the substance were present. In those affected by the inhalation of the airborne particles, common adverse reactions were occupational rhinitis and asthma. Allergies Soy protein occurs as an impurity in manufactured gour gum and can make up as much as 10%. The gour gum can therefore adversely affect those with sensitivity to soy. A few individuals are allergic to gour gum and experience reactions such as flushing, itchiness and diarrhea. Consumption for allergic individuals over time is also known to cause small sores or lesions as well as chronic diarrhea. Manufacturers and suppliers will sometimes substitute gour gum, xanthan gum, and cellulose gum in formulations, without changing product labels. Often, blends of all these ingredients are sold as cellulose gum. If allergic to gour gum, the most common foods to suspect contamination from are frozen dairy slash ice treats, soft cheeses, salad dressing and baked goods. Dioxin Contamination In July 2007, the European Commission issued a health warning to its member states after high levels of dioxins were detected in a food additive, gour gum, used as thickener in small quantities in meat, dairy, dessert, or delicatessen products. The source was traced to gour gum from India that was contaminated with pentachlorophenol, a pesticide no longer in use. PCP contains dioxins as contamination. Dioxins damage the human immune system.